win you guys it was a very genuine contract i read through it everything was you know the receipt looked you know so i was like there's no way right? Welcome back to my channel if you're new here welcome 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 if you're an old subscriber thank you so much for coming back well today i'm going to talk about um my experience uh of being robbed by house brokers in kampala guys i know i'm going to sound like a amunachalo <laughs> a villager or something like that but hey these kampala thieves don't know anyone they know no one and they can rob anybody so this is for you who who is thinking of getting a house especially in the new year i mean as as time goes on these guys become wiser they become um they are basically wiser in their game so if you're not careful you end up a victim so where do i start <laughs> so anyways um it was sometime last year i got this feeling like i want to get a new place i want to move to a bigger house and stuff like that so i mean i picked out my phone usual thing we do here in kampala in I looked for house brokers in the areas I was interested in. So I was interested in the areas of Moyenga. So I looked for house brokers in the areas of Moyenga. Well, I managed to get a contact. I call up this number and the guy picks up. It was a guy. And uh, I ask him if he has any available houses. And we have a normal conversation you would have with a house broker, basically. So. I tell him the specifications of the house that I want. Um, I want a two bedroom house in a good secure area, um, plenty of room, parking space, obviously, um, security, you know, things like that. Uh, near to a supermarket or a grocery shop, like somewhere I can get my groceries very fast and stuff like that. And he goes, cool, um, I actually have a couple of houses when you're ready let me know and I'm like perfect since I have your number I am going to call you and uh, I'll call you back tomorrow morning and we could we could look at some of those houses it goes cool 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 it's fine so we make a program to meet the next day and around that time I call him to ask him where I can find him so I call him and he goes uh, I'm, I'm in Muyenga and uh, can you come and find me at, uh, there is a common supermarket in Muyenga, um, next to the wine, um, it's next to a wine garage, yeah. So I, I grab a boda boda very fast, I go to meet him. When I get there, um, he wasn't there. So he calls to ask um if i've reached and i tell him yes i have reached and he asks what are you wearing and i go i'm wearing a white um white jacket it had drained actually so i told him i'm wearing a white jacket so he goes okay i'll be there in in two three minutes i'm like cool so i stand out there i wait for him he comes he has a bajaj yeah so i'm like oh cool he's like hop on i'm like is it far from here he goes no maybe five minutes or so I'm like, cool, let's go. So we go and go and go. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Anyways, so we, we take this ride up to the house. <sighs> when I get to the house, I love the place. Well, it was still under construction. Okay, not construction, maybe finishing touches. The house was complete. And uh, I think they were just doing a few finishing touches here and there, planting grass in the places that needed grass, um, cleaning, the, like last minute cleaning and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, cool, this looks nice. And uh, I ask him, how much are these ones? Because I gave you a specification of my budget. And he goes, these houses go for um, 
600,000, the two bedroom ones. I'm like, really? He goes, yes, they are two bedroom. So they are two bedroom houses. So I was really excited because I was like, this is a very good deal. It's a gated neighborhood. Security is very good. The houses, I mean, the rooms looked really big. Like, I was like, what? For 600,000, this is a good deal. I'm going to pay for this and I'm taking this house. So I tried to conclude with him and... I had to go for a water break. Anyways, so at this time is when I am introduced to someone called Hassan, who apparently happened to be the the house manager. So I have a normal conversation with this guy, and uh, he tells me uh, the property belongs to his father, and uh, and he's he's going to manage. Well, it's uh, he. He sounded really intelligent. He didn't sound like a scam at that moment. He looked really smart. He, he looked educated and literate, and you know, so and confident. I mean, I had no reason to doubt him. So uh, we concluded with him. He gave me his father's number. As per any house, if you're going to move into someone's house, you need to talk to a landlord or something. So I talked to this guy who I was told is a doctor. So I call up this doctor guy. Um, they told me his name is Dr. Yosam and he works at uh, Sambia Hospital as well as Mengo Hospital. So I kind of believed everything. In this moment, I was desperate for a house. I had money at, I mean, I had cash at hand. So I was like, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? I mean, yeah. So I called up this guy <laughs> and he picks up and he sounded very mature. I mean, really mature, like someone I would, like probably about my father's age or my grandfather's age, you know, someone really mature. And he tells me, oh, my son already told me you're interested in one of my houses, uh, one of the two-bedroomed uh, uh, apartments. And I'm like, yes, I'm interested. And uh, and all that, he goes, uh, has he told you the price? And I say, yes, he told me it's at 600,000 Ugandan shillings. And he goes, yeah, um, so how soon do you want the house? Because uh, quite a number of people have been asking for that same house. And I go, I want it as soon as possible. And he's like, okay, uh, can we meet tomorrow so that you, ca you can make the payments? I told him, cool, what time? And he gives me a time. I think he told me by 10 a.m. Uh, he's going to call me and uh, we could meet somewhere at Mengo Hospital because that's where he's going to be. There's no way I could doubt that. I mean, he sounded so real, so genuine like you know so anyways uh fast forward to the next day i get up early i dress up <sighs> did i mention i was actually very heavily pregnant <laughs> so i dress up jump on a bajaj on a border border on a bike I jump on a bike and uh, I get to Mengo Hospital at the gate of the hospital and then I call his number and he goes, oh, I'm, I'm in surgery. I'm going, to, I'm going for surgery or I'm going, I have a surgery to do in the next few minutes. But uh, I'm calling my son so you can meet with him. I have given him all the documents that you will need for the house. Please meet with him at... Uh, I think that was in Kumba University. Yeah, I think that's in Kumba University. Meet him at Nkumba University. And uh, I think he has an exam. That's according to him. Uh, my son has an exam. Uh, he's at school. So meet with him. He has all the documents that you will need to sign and all that. Then uh, from there, oh, you let me know. So I'm like, cool. Uh, I don't know. At that moment, I didn't think of anything scam or anything like that. Meanwhile, have you subscribed to my channel? <laughs> it's free of charge. Please subscribe. Um, okay. 
so I call this guy and he tells me, he's, yes, he's at Nkumba and his dad has given him all the documents that we need, plus the keys to the house. After making payments, he will give me the keys. I'm like, cool, I get a house. I'm getting a house today. Anyway, so I grab another boda boda to the university. I meet up with this boy at a cafeteria outside of the university. Um, he has his breakfast. I think he was having breakfast or late breakfast. I don't know. Le early lunch. I don't know. Anyways, so he gave me the papers. They looked genuine. Like a contract between uh, a, a landlord and a tenant. He had receipts. I'm going to get those, those documents. I'm going to link them somewhere here or here. I don't know. Somewhere. I'm going to link them. You're going to see. They had, uh, they were, how should I say, like a lot of thought went into this documentation. It is not, it wasn't handwritten, first of all. It was, basically it looked like a document that they sat down and planned for very, very well. Now, they wanted me to pay rent th four months up front, but I told them I only have three months. And uh, the other balance, I told them I would give it to them for the other one month, I would give it to them um, a month. In in two weeks, actually it was in two weeks. I told him I'll give it to them in two weeks. And he goes, okay, fine. You see, that's the money we used to pay the Ascari, the gardener and stuff like that. I'm like, it's okay. In two weeks time, you'll get that money. And so we get to sign the contract. Oh, I get to get my, I, 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 I paid in cash. I paid in cash. Never do that. That is at least something I learned later. If you're looking for a house, my brother, my sister, my friend, do not, do not pay in cash. In Kampala, don't pay in cash. Go and do it in the bank. And you know, we are so used to doing it that we pay in cash. Mm -mm. Bad idea. Always ask for a bank account. Ask for an account number where you can deposit the money and stuff like that anyways that's a mistake i made i paid in cash i was so happy i had gotten the house or oh, the boy gave me keys to the house it was so genuine you guys it was a very genuine contract i read through it everything was you know the receipt looked you know so i was like there's no way they, no okay at that moment i couldn't think it could be a scam or anything so i paid I had to leave the place and then uh, my plan was to move in that weekend so that must have been around Tuesday when we did that so uh, Thursday I collect myself and I tell myself let me go and clean the house thoroughly thoroughly clean the house before I move in on Saturday and uh, I go to the house and uh, I reach the house the I think the, the cleaners were there, people who were cleaning the house. and But I wanted to clean my house myself. Hmm. Anyways, <laughs> so uh, I got there, I started, ah, I, when I got there, the door was closed. So I pick out my keys that I, were, I was given by Hassan, <laughs> the manager. <laughs> so I pick out my keys, enter them in the door. And the door couldn't open i try another key i'm like let me try some some other key maybe this one has a fault or something i try another key and it doesn't open that is the moment that i knew something was wrong my heart beat like i think my heart skipped a bit i was like huh it better not be what i'm thinking so I put my bag down, pick up my phone, try to call this Hassan person. The number you're trying to call is not available. Please try again later. I'm like, huh? I only have one number of his. Let me call the broker, the guy who got me the house. I call the person's number. The number you're trying to call is not available. Please try again later. I'm like, I am so doomed right now <laughs> so i call dr yosam himself 
the number you chose. I mean, there is no way that all three numbers could be off at the same time. <sighs> That's the moment my heart started beating. I didn't know what to do for a moment there. So I called my friend Nancy and uh, Nancy told me straight up, she's like, girl, you've been robbed. I'm I called my little brother and uh, I explained to him everything that had gone on. At that moment, I was shaking. I was so shaking. I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, no way, there's no way. So I called my brother and he asks me, are there any people around there? I'm like, yes, is there Anna Scurry? or a gatekeeper or someone who takes care of the place, a caretaker, and I'm like, I don't know. So I talked to one of the people I found there cleaning and stuff like that. They go, yes, there's a gatekeeper. Um, he must be around, a caretaker. He must be around. So they, this guy comes to me, and every time I have gone to that house, I had never seen this guy. But for the first time, they bring me someone and tell me he's the caretaker of the property. I talked to this guy. I conclude I concluded after talking to this guy that it's true I had been robbed like in broad daylight broad daylight it wasn't night it wasn't you know evening when I paid this money it was morning hours it was you people this guy he tells me as a matter of fact we don't know I don't know anyone called Hassan I don't know anyone like i didn't even know anyone was looking at these houses because these houses uh the owner is not a, a man it's actually a, la a lady i'm like you're joking huh you people i panicked now that's the moment i had to call my husband to let him know um what had happened <sighs> anyways so that's how i was robbed in kampala have you ever been robbed by house brokers please comment in comment down below i would love to know and how did you go about it i mean i tried reporting to the police but you know you know how our things work they will give you a case number and basically that's it nothing ever happened i never got a phone call i nothing ever happened really so i lost that money and uh i just thought i should share this so that you do not become a victim of the same um especially you who has clicked on this video because you want to know this would this would happen to anyone anyone ugandan or not but especially you who is trying to look for a house and you're not hmm. wait in my next video i'm going to talk about um the red flags I'm going to, to, to tell you about all the red flags that you should watch out for when trying to get a house broker in Kampala. Especially you people who are coming from out of the country, you're new in the country, you're new in Kampala, from wherever you are, you could be Ugandan, but you're new in Kampala or you're trying to get a house in Kampala. Watch out for all these things. Um, otherwise thank you so much for staying um to the end of the video i love you so much for staying this long and um please consider subscribing to the channel